Budget Blinds. Visit their showroom or call today for a free in-home consultation. This is New Cap News with Chris Chacon. Well, good evening and thank you for joining us. With the new year comes new tax laws for Canadians. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's promised federal tax cuts for the middle class came into effect on Friday. The tax rate for people earning between $45,000 and just under $100,000 a year will drop from 22% to 20.5%. Wendell Goosen, a certified accountant, says the new break for the middle class won't make a significant difference for Lloydminster residents falling inside of that bracket. I don't think so. That the biggest cut is around a thousand dollars, which is nice. But you divide it up into fifty-two weeks. Is that twenty bucks a week? It's not a big cut. Well, people earning more than two hundred thousand dollars annually will now see a four percent tax increase under the new laws. An estimated three hundred and twenty thousand Canadians fall into that bracket. Goosen says even some locals will be impacted by the change. The wealthy are going to put more effort into avoiding tax, not evading. No, one, Very few people evade tax. They're going to great effort to avoid tax. And if it means leaving the country or the area, they will. They will change provinces. Well, the government is expecting the tax hike for the upper class to generate an additional $3 billion in revenue. Well, 2015 has been another busy year for Lloydminster RCMP. From dealing with a new hot drug on local streets to finding new ways to work with the community. Inspector Suki Manj has been right in the middle of it. Bart Pediasek sat down with the detachment commander as he explains the year that was. And we're joined by Inspector Suki Manj of the Lloydminster RCMP. Thank you once again for joining us here, Inspector. No problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, I Inspector, let's begin with a bit of a disturbing trend. Not only to Lloydminster, just to be clarify, it's a trend that's popping up all over Canada. The use of fentanyl, uh, that's been especially prevalent here. We've had some many issues as well. Yes, um, unfortunately, it's one of those type of drugs that people don't look as so bad, like it, it's, it's a pill, so it, it's um, uh, more of a designer type of drug and it has devastating effects. So potent that just the smallest amount can, can potentially kill you. It'll stop your heart and the symptoms are on, uh, come on very quickly. So most people don't even recognize it's happening. and that when you're mixed it with alcohol or any other type of drug, it, it, it's just devastating and it takes very little for, uh, for that to happen. Uh, and now it's not only RCMP talking about the dangers to people out on the outside, but we're also doing some things about it. We've had some major busts this year. Yeah, we've, we've uh, concentrated on a few projects uh, to Project Coalition was one that we did just most recently. It was a two month project. Quite frankly, these type of things are just not a police issue. They're a community issue. And, and I think you will hear that a lot from me, and I think people might um, get tired of that at some, at some point. But I think um, it's important for me to reiterate that and say that, yes, we have an arm in this. We have, we have a job to do getting this type of uh, drug and all, all drugs off the street. Uh, but I guess we wouldn't have to if we worked as a community to make sure that people understood uh, what the effects of all these things do to people and families and, and our health system and social system, the justice system, they're all intertwined. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice to parents and family members is to keep in touch with the people you love, uh, understand what's going on in their lives, um, get on top of these things as early as you can and when you need it, get some help. There's help out there for everybody. And I know a lot of this really stems to education and talking to kids early about this kind of stuff. This year, our CMP have joined up with the Lloydminster Bobcats for a special, uh, a special initiative, the Project Keep Straight. What is that all about? So Project Keep Straight is, uh, we, we look at people in the community that have a, a positive impact on, on the youth, especially. And the Bobcats are, are one of our well-known groups in town, and, and it's comprised of young people, teenagers. Um, and there's a lot of our, our young fellows that and, and girls that, that uh, look up to these people. And we took them out and had them have an opportunity to go to Vancouver along with yourself, uh, East Hastings, which is world renowned for the wrong reasons. 
Um, and it's an eye opener. Um, it's uh, another opportunity for them to come back and tell the story of, of the people that live on the east side of, of Vancouver and how quickly their lives deteriorate. Well, thanks for sitting down with us, Inspector. I look forward to talking to you in the coming year. That was Inspector Suki Manj of the Lloydminster RCMP. Well, welcome back. 2015 came with many changes and struggles for the city of Cold Lake. While the economy has taken a toll on several businesses, the city is still moving forward towards com the community's long-term goals. Hanatita sat down with Mayor Craig Copeland to discuss some of the highlights from the year and what residents can expect in 2016. Joining me in Cold Lake City Hall is Mayor Craig Copeland. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So what are some of the biggest struggles the city has faced this year? Well, you know, really the, the city is doing fine. The issue is, is the economy is so, so weak right now. You know, we, we were okay in the beginning of uh, 2015, but boy, you can really see how, how uh, people are getting laid off. The business, businesses are down, the sales are down dramatically, hotels are, you know, vacant. And so you, it's almost like a dime. It just turned on a dime quite quickly. And that is very concerning on council. One of the reasons why we didn't raise taxes in this year's uh, for setting the taxes for 216. So there's been two major shifts in government this year. Obviously the first one back in May with the uh, shift to the NDP party and then more recently with the uh, Liberal Party being the uh, forming the uh, federal government. Can you tell me um, how the uh, political parties will impact Cold Lake and if you've seen any changes so far? Well, I think the, the provincial one with the big change with the NDP coming in, taking over, changing sort of the, the, the way Alberta is going to run in terms of the cost of producing a, a barrel of oil in our area. That's really significant. The corporate tax raising it by 20 percent is really going to impact uh, our local business and uh, the big industry players. And then the carbon, the new carbon initiative that they're doing, uh, you know, that remains to be seen how expensive that's going to be for business. Federally, a bit young right now. What the big key for Cold Lake is, because we're such an Air Force town, is looking for the new fighter jet. Will the Liberal government support the new fighter jet? Uh, you know, the men and women that serve in Cold Lake up here in the Air Force, they do a tremendous job. Uh, they've kept the F-18 flying for a long time, and uh, it's time that uh, we got a new jet, and I hope the Liberal government is going to be investing in that. What are some of the things that the uh, city has to look forward to in the new year? Well, we're excited. I think we're going to be, be, it's all about the kids. Um, and so we're going to be investing at the Energy Center, which is our big recreation facility in Coal Lake. We're going to be doing a, a, two, a twin field house and uh, gymnastics and dance, all new buildings. We're also going to be doing some major road work. Uh, so Highway 28 within the city, we're going to be spending about $4 million fixing up the highway there and a ba major underground storm sewer project of about $4 million on that highway to help drain the city of Cold Lake. So the next municipal election is in the fall of 2017. Are you planning on running again for mayor? Well, we're out, oh, halfway through the term and uh, certainly, uh, you know, I, I mean, blessed, let's just say, uh, on my time as mayor. I've had a great bunch of councillors to work with. I mean, tremendous. Uh, and I have great uh, staff here at the City of Cold Lake are, are totally awesome. So, uh, you know, everything, uh, you know, if your health is good, uh, I'll certainly consider it, you know, more likely throw my name in the hat again. Once again, Mayor Craig Copeland, thank you so much for joining us. It was my pleasure. Thanks for coming up to Cold Lake.